Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is George Karagiannis. I'm the Deputy Secretary General for Civil Protection. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome you to Athens and the headquarters of the Ministry for Climate Crisis and Civil Protection for this year's Union Mechanism for Civil Protection Lessons Learned uh, Workshop. Continuous improvement is the hallmark of our profession. We use lessons learned from disasters around the world to improve and update our plans, policies, and procedures with a view to making our prevention, preparedness, and resilience efforts more effective. Over the next two days, we shall seek to learn from, the, from this year's unprecedented mobilization of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism spawned by a series of wildfires raging across Europe. The early engagement of senior leadership is the key to the success of any lessons learned program. And the presence here today of the Minister for Climate Crisis and Civil Protection of Greece and the European Commissioner of Humanitarian Aid and Crisis Management are a testament to that. We're honored by their presence and are looking forward to their guidance and direction. Therefore, and without further ado, it's my honor to present Mr. Christos Tilianidis, Minister for Climate Crisis and Civil Protection of the Hellenic Republic. Good morning, everybody. First of all, dear Commissioner, dear Ambassador of Italy, dear State Secretary, Dr. Arafat, dear Director Generals, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a great pleasure to welcome you at our annual EU Civil Protection Mechanism Workshop, which for the first time is taking place outside Brussels, here in Athens, and as you uh, understand, it's really very important for us in, in Greece. Um, but first of all, please allow me to welcome especially EU Commissioner for Crisis Management, my dear friend, Janis Lenarsic, together with whom I have a strong and productive cooperation based on shared goal to enhance our European civil protection mechanism and rescue EU, a mechanism that acts as an additional a strong safety net, a multiplier of our national capacities. Our event today, this workshop, is taking place uh, on the premises of the newly established Ministry for Climate Crisis and Civil Protection. The establishment of this ministry has proved the determination of uh, Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis and our government to address the huge challenges and the unprecedented impact of climate change nationally. But, of course, we strongly believe that we need a collective European response to deal with this issue effectively. It's, I strongly believe that it's a naive approach for anyone to think that it's feasible dealing with this unprecedented situation only within national borders. It's really out of the reality, this approach. Especially after the outcome of uh, COP26, it is imperative to work collectively, both on the European and international level to tackle these really uh, huge challenges. It's true that the results of COP26 did not meet our expectations. However, there were important conclusions, and personally, I prefer to see the glass half full instead of uh, half empty. Glasgow set the stage for the next phase. Expectations are now high for COP27, we need to start working hard now, together, as always, to make sure that in Cairo, we will be able to deliver more concrete, positive results. We are, many, we are very much aware of the strong links between climate change and civil protection. It's obvious that without prevention, preparedness, and resilience, any action 
by traditional instruments alone will not be enough, will not be effective. Therefore, the hard core of our approach in this ministry is grounded on three pillars, prevention, preparedness, and resilience. These are the key elements we need to develop in order to protect effectively our citizens, to save lives, to save livelihoods. Dear colleagues, allow me to, to use this terminology as <laughs> very experienced in this field. Our workshop will focus on the 2021 forest fire season, a fire season that was characterized by mega fires. It was marked by really devastating forest fires across the Mediterranean region. And it was a challenging and a demanding one to say the least. It is estimated that more than half a million hectares were destroyed by fires, with forests representing about 61%. At the same time, about 25% of these zones burned were inside the Natura 2000 uh, sites, Europe's biodiversity reservoir. The Mediterranean countries, among uh, which Greece, Italy, uh, Turkey, Algeria, were particularly affected. Greece experienced a record-breaking number of days with temperatures over 40 degrees Celsius. As a result, we, are were, we were confronted with forest fires of unprecedented intensity. Another clear indication that climate crisis, climate change is really here. It's real, it's not fake news, and it affects all of us in all aspects of our lives. Our country reached out to its European family for assistance, as always. This is the definition of family. Via the EU Civil Protection Mechanism and Rescue EU, the mobilization of help from European member states was really incredible, really unprecedented. It was truly European solidarity in action. Let me take this opportunity to thank once again from the bottom of my heart all the member states as well as all third countries for their support. It was really for us something which already put in our hearts. And of course, for showing that cooperation and solidarity is real, concretely, with tangible impact on the ground, it showed that it is our common value. It is the principle the, that guides our action as, Euro, as European family. And uh, the Greek people were grateful to you, and they have shown their gratitude last summer in every city and in every village affected by these fires. They opened their hearts and houses to all the firefighters who came to help. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, climate change is a reality. It is a fact. We are facing its consequences, its repercussions more and more often. The climate crisis has already begun, posing an unprecedented threat to our way of life and to the future of our children. No country alone, regardless of its size or power, can cope with the climate crisis. Collective response and collective, collective action is the way, the only way, to move forward and to be effective. The frequency and intensity of natural disasters have risen sharply, fire five times in the last 50 years, according to the latest World Meteorological Organization report. Greece is undertaking initiatives and actions at European and international level to strengthen the collective response to the climate crisis. The latest MET 9 declaration after the Athens uh, summit is a strong framework for action. At the same time, the reinforcement of the European Civil Protection Mechanism and SKU is one of our main priorities. The goal is for Europe to have a strategic advantage 
and to enhance its capacity to deal with the repercussions of, of climate change. This is the challenge of our era. This is the challenge of our generation. A challenge that cuts horizontally across every policy, every sector. Dear friends, the EU Civil Protection Mechanism and the Rescue EU is a solid framework of cooperation at every level, in the field, but also in the exchange of know-how and best practices. Knowledge and expertise sharing is at the heart of our workshop here today. A workshop that will examine closely the lessons learned from the 2021 fire season, fire season identify what we did well in order to develop it further, but also identifying areas where there is room for improvement. And as you know, there is always room for improvement. This is the way to strengthen our disaster response capabilities, making the EU civil protection mechanism and rescue you even more effective. And let me re reiterate that here in Athens, our full support to the efforts of Commissioner Lenarchis to make the European civil protection system stronger. My dear friend, we are really together with you and you can rely on us as Greek government, as Ministry of Climate Crisis and Civil Protection. And this is my personal commitment, but also personal commitment by Prime Minister Mitsotakis and also have shown his determination and he repeated in several occasions to continue to support the EU civil protection mechanism and the rescue EU. Solidarity in action is our common ground. It is the European approach for disaster management and for tackling climate change and it is the way forward. Thank you all again for your presence here. I wish you very full, full workshop, a real pleasant stay in Athens, I'm sure, because as you know, the Greek hospitality is always very, very discreet, but you can enjoy this hospitality in all aspects. Thank you so much for your presence here. Thank you, Minister. And now our guest of honor for this workshop, Mr. Yanis Lenarchich, European Commissioner for Humanitarian Aid and Crisis Management. <laughs> Minister Stylianidis, distinguished colleagues, friends, Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to be here today. And many thanks for organizing this and inviting us to this workshop on the 2021 forest fire season. Uh, and I'm particularly pleased that this time we decided to meet here in Athens. There are a number of important reasons why this is such a good venue. First of all, Athens is a beautiful city. Uh, an ancient capital which is so welcoming and warm. Second, Greece continues to be one of the strongest supporters of the EU civil protection. Third, Greek people have a long and good tradition to stand in solidarity with others. Greece remains one of the most active members of the EU civil protection mechanism, both in Europe and well beyond. For instance, just to illustrate this, recently the government has offered assistance to places with great emergency needs like Lebanon, Rwanda, or the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So solidarity of European Union and Greece has no geographic limits. <laughs> and finally, this summer season has served as a catalyst for today's discussion. 
What a summer this was. We recall these numerous terrible wildfires that caused so much destruction uh, around Athens, on Evia Islands, on Rhodos, on Peloponnesus, and elsewhere. And in this moment, I would like to express again my solidarity with people of Greece, but also with other European regions that were heavily affected by forest fires or floods, and to those who lost loved ones, homes, and livelihoods due to these recurrent disasters. The whole of Europe stands with those most exposed to the increasingly intense fire seasons. And the solidarity that was shown this summer, I think, speaks for itself. Following requests for assistance, the European Commission rapidly activated our Union Civil Protection Mechanism, and we facilitated the deployment of 13 ground-based firefighting teams from member states and participating states, including Cyprus, Romania, Slovakia, Czechia, France, Germany, Austria, and Poland. The European Union also mobilized nine airplanes and helicopters from Cyprus, from Sweden, France, Croatia, and Spain to assist with the local response efforts in Greece. Together with regional emergency services and national services, the European mechanism supported over 700 water drops in areas such as Diabolici, East Mani, Fokida, or ancient Olympia. And I really wish to thank again all member states and participating states for their offers of support for Greece and to other countries that requested assistance during this difficult summer. And as Minister Stylianides put it, this was a clear demonstration of EU solidarity in action. Of course, many other countries were also affected. Through the summer, Europe saw wild blazes in Cyprus, in Turkey, in North Macedonia, Albania, Italy, France, Algeria, in addition to Greece. Uh, but scenes of burnt woodland were also reported from as far north as Sweden and Finland. And most re recently, as late as end of October and the beginning of November, large areas in difficult terrain burned in Austria. And this was the very first time that Austria asked for assistance through the Union Civil Protection Mechanism to extinguish forest fires. And it was Italy that dispatched two firefighting airplanes to Austria at that point. So what is clear after this extraordinary summer is that we are witnessing a changing disaster landscape. Today we face a new reality. Yes, climate crisis is already here. And we see it in more intense fire bases. We see it in new and more complex fire-related risks. We see it in fires occurring in places traditionally not affected. And we see the fire season starting earlier and lasting longer, well into the autumn. The recent UN climate conference left us without any doubt. With each degree of warming, extreme weather events are increasing in intensity and frequency. This means that we need to reinforce our civil protection efforts, both in the short and longer term, and across the whole disaster cycle, from prevention and preparedness to response and recovery. And I'm therefore delighted to be here for the opening of this civil protection workshop, and I'm really pleased that we managed to mobilize both the civil protection as well as forestry community. This workshop is the start of the learning process ahead of the next year's forest fire season, as well as those that are coming beyond. But certain points are already clear. Uh, most importantly, I think that our civil protection system needs to be strengthened across all its dimensions. This year, EU civil protection mechanism has already received more than 100 requests for assistance. In the first two decades of its existence, 
the average number of requests for assistance submitted to the European Union civil protection mechanism was about 20 per year. This year, we are already well beyond 100. And with each passing year, the number of activation has recently been steadily on the rise. So this places, of course, additional pressure on our civil protection resources, both at national and the European rescue level. So we need to do something about it, which means that we must step up our disaster management activities, and we must also, and this is my humble little contribution to this workshop, we must, I strongly believe, strengthen the rescue. And I was really pleased to hear Minister Stilenida's commitment to further strengthening the rescue capacity. But first, we need to do something more on prevention. Uh, that's the starting point to reduce the wildfire threats. That's why we already, in advance of last summer, we issued practical guidelines on land-based wildfire prevention to improve local knowledge and help regional response efforts on the ground. Uh, <clears throat> this is what, moving forward, we are going to place a renewed focus on forest resilience. This is going to include new funding for forest fire prevention programs all around Europe, and this was something that my colleague Commissioner Sinkevicius already mentioned uh, when he was here in Greece about 10 days ago. And as part of our new environmental strategy, woodland protection will also remain a key priority. As you know, this summer the Commission published the EU forest strategy for 2030, and one of its aims is to increase forest resilience to prevent and reduce wildfires and other forest-related risks. Second thing, we need to do more on preparedness. That's key to different types of disaster risks, including wildfires. We need to think innovatively, and there is an innovative idea floating around that we are very much willing to look into, and this is about idea to pre-position teams of firefighters from other EU member states in those areas that are especially prone to fires during summer season. But also, another issue is coming up, and that's the knowledge network. We are launching the knowledge network on, in December. This would be a commonly owned shared space for actors to share their experience and exchange views. With this platform, we will support large-scale training programs to improve the response efforts. And finally, it is clear that a rapid and efficient response is essential to protect civilians, property, nature, or cultural heritage. And it is clear that we need to reinforce existing response capacity, uh, both at national and European level, and hence my little contribution to your discussions about what to do in view of the coming forest fire season and beyond. Don't forget about the rescue and further strengthening it. In this context, I'm pleased and proud to announce that the Commission and the Greek authorities are in the process of finalizing a grant agreement for two additional rescue medium amphibious planes, which will further enhance the EU overall preparedness. And we are working together with all other interested member states to ensure a quick launch of the production of these airplanes that we strongly need. And since we cannot wait for years uh, for these planes to come from the production line, we are also strengthening our rescue transition, including with the heavy lift helicopters for the next fire season. And we'll continue working with all member states to enhance these capacities. Uh, we'll look into, as I said, innovative ideas, including prepositioning pre of assets. But let me conclude here with the following. Europe, there is no doubt about it, faces many, many significant disaster threats, including uh, wildfires. We need to cooperate 
we need to anticipate and we need to foresee in order to address these threats. And this workshop is a very important step in this process. It will help with our planning for future wildlife, wildfire threats, not only for the next year, but also beyond. And, and once again, I wish to thank you very much for organizing this event, for participating in this event. I wish you a fruitful and engaging discussion. And of course, I'm very much looking forward to hearing about the outcome. Thank you.